Hello everybody, this is Aethidus and welcome to basically the basic tutorial on how Terror Engine works, the story creator to be exact, and just to get familiar with it and be hopefully help you on how to create an amazing horror story, horror game story, whatever you want to call it. I know there are some tutorials already, but this will be more in-depth explanation kind of tell you a bit of everything what everything does and if you have any questions feel free to post them and we will answer them or we'll make another video topic explaining said thing but for now there we'll just go with the basics now you gotta remember you need a premium zeoworks account to gain access to the multiplayer and the story creator which if you go to the website zeoworks.com you can go from there and follow the instructions so if you have that, you log in, click on your story creator, you'll be brought into here. This, when it loads up, you will get this screen for starting out. So, you can see it's just a blank. Uh, I'm using dev kit just because it's there and I have all my stuff there. But it will basically be the same thing from what the actual release will be. So, open it up and you will see this. This will actually be your settings tab. It will be the first thing you opened up fog settings, everything from advanced settings which is basically just special effects that you can have but we will go over those at a later date or in a later video. Your fog settings, density, field of view, what kind of game mode you would want to have it, whether you want to have verses on it, show NPC grid which just kind of basically shows how large of the area the NPCs will actually work and so you want to kind of build your level within this constraints if possible and then just your skyboxes lighting weather effects we'll just open that up a little bit just so what if we were to place anything we'll actually be able to see it and then lock your story to the author so let's say you made a really nice story but you don't want anyone else to touch it you can lock it to the story lock it only to you and then of course you got your weather effects of dust hail rain snow and flurries Escape mode, you got collect to mode, collect and escape, and kill NPC and escape, which is a new addition that hasn't been in till the last few editions of the developer and in the official. So we'll just play around with those in the later game, kind of show you how to set up each kind of game, and then show you how to do versus and multiplayer. So that's your settings tab over in the file, if you hit the file, you'll get your back to scene, save story, load story, or quit to main menu. And clicking that doesn't quit it, at least I don't think of the official, so you just go back to scene. And it'll bring you back to here. Your scene tab gives you basically what you need to build the level, like the walls and floor, it's just self-explanatory. Gives you your outdoor walls and floors, your indoor, indoor walls, indoor floors, windows, Blood tiles, gotta love blood. Dungeon prefabs, I guess you can call them. Cave prefabs, another few miscellaneous things. You can scroll up and down. And then some sci fi buildings. Then you have your items there's the pre built, flashlight, candle, lantern, flame torch, night vision, and night vision. Other health packs, and then not applicable at this very moment. Future items may be posted at a later date. Keys to open your locked doors, which are set to a specific ID, which we will go over in a later video. Your custom items that so you can create, basically your own custom item if you wanted to. We can do that in a later video. The NPC tab to basically put in your monsters to either chase you or kill you. Your events tab to make your triggers to have something happen, something move, a monster appear, play a sound, finish the game, a timer or a delay for something, a camera, your player start zone, teleport, invisible barrier or an invisible wall, the death barrier or death wall, bottomless pit, whatever you want, something to kill the player for going somewhere, and an NPC avoid zone which is very crucial and I will explain in a later video, climbing, vaulting, rope, Player starts, monster point start, which are your versus node and patrol nodes. 
and then your models for basically to decorate your world or make something you must collect and then kind of a new feature map generator which is something we will go over in a later video which is a really neat feature if you're lazy or you just can't think of anything to do you generate something quickly for movement of the camera you can use W to go forward S to go back D to go right, right A to go left now if you hold space you are now you can now look around with the mouse and then use the WASD keys to keep moving as long as you hold space wherever your mouse goes is kinda how you look and if you see in the bottom if you can sort of tell it's an arrow it kinda just points you kinda say it's a compass it points north of kind of the forward direction of your map current item you have selected and then how many objects are in your current said map now let's say we want to start placing objects well before we start doing that we gotta bring up the little grid so somewhere in this map somewhere in there our grids hiding well to snap the grid to wherever your mouse is or wherever you want it on the map just right click and there it will snap the grid to where your mouse is currently located click and drag now when you're placing an object just simply hold the right mouse button and then click the left mouse button if you have an object selected which I don't seem to have selected so let's just put a wall there boom there you go you've placed your first object and you can look around it I also forgot to mention if you hold shift as you're moving the camera it goes a little faster sorry about that so we can always just go right along and if you kinda notice that red line right here that's kinda of a guide to kinda of know where or how you're lined up so you can use it to kinda of line up to where if you're gonna place multiple items together you can do that so now if you wanted to deselect them say I want to I don't need to edit these anymore you can either click the X button deselect them or you can just press enter to deselect all so let's say oh I selected everything but I'm done with everything enter you did deselected everything now let's say I want to remove this middle wall if you hold control and then left click you will have selected it and then let's say I want to delete it I'll just simply hit the delete button when this item is selected boom I'll just put, put the floor there, there we go. now let's say we want to put these walls so they line up to right, to right along with the floor so in order to do that we can right click now you can either change the rotation through here but we'll, we'll save this for more advanced editing so if you on your keyboard if you press the R key it will rotate the object at a 15 degrees which if you know your proper mathematics it, it will line up evenly to 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees useful for doing all kinds of things just it will go up very high so you just gotta keep that in mind you can always just reset that back to zero if you so chose so now that we have that so it will be flush with here but now how do I move this wall so it will come right along right along right here well with the arrow keys as long as this item is selected if you have the arrow keys and according to wherever your compass is seeing how I'm looking forward straight say straight north we're looking straight north if I hear a hit left and right on my key at my arrows it will line up according to however I want it up down left right 
now you might also notice it's not all the way up I want it to be I want the floor on the very bottom of this wall or the wall to line up with kind of how the floor is right well there's two ways you can either change it through the XYZ positioning or you can do it easier and press the brackets to lower or raise it so we will do that with this again rotate it bring it over and then we will raise it but let's say I want to place another while just kind of close off this little room for no reason how can I do it so it will just stay lined up like that without actually changing it afterwards well you can simply just raise your grid up with the plus and minus keys you can raise your grid up keep in mind these will move up I think a full two units or two blocks if you could imagine the grid was to flip and go up and down where if you were to edit it I think this will go down half yeah this will go down a half of square so this will actually go up and down two blocks and then just simply right and left click and there we go well hopefully that covered some of the basics for starting out on what everything does and how to get started if I missed anything feel free to leave a comment or stay tuned for the next episode I guess or the next tutorial video and eventually we'll start making something a little more lovelier like this peace guys and happy building